we're in a uh, little bit of an older retreat that we've just finished doing a off-grid upgrade to. Um, this van is actually uh, a family member's van. So uh, we've had some, uh, some enjoyable pleasure doing this van. So hopefully they get to go on their journeys as they approach retirement. Um, so basically same sort of scenario as we take everyone through was, you know, what appliances do you want to run? And, and essentially the brief was coffee's pretty important. Um, we do want to be able to run the air conditioner uh, for shorter periods of time and a whole bunch of other kitchen appliances basically. So we went about designing this system with um, some flexibility in mind. It's probably um, a larger system than what's necessary for their load requirements, but a little bit more is obviously better than less. So. Um, this van's ended up with um, 1200 watts of solar on the roof. Um, we've got a 3000 watt inverter uh, and we've got a 550 amp hour battery in here. So um, the 550 is going to give them the flexibility to be able to run this um, older Dometic air conditioner for, you know, four, five hours a night. Um, and then the 1200 watts is going to be an, an allow them to then uh, recharge that energy consumption the following day without too much concern. They have got, um, again, an older compressor fridge. So it is a little bit more energy hungry than what say the newer style compressor fridges are. But with the amount of solar and battery that we've got in this thing, they're really not going to be struggling for running that fridge on, and on top of all their other appliances that they've got. So as per usual, we do give the ability to plug portable panels into this van as well. So there's an Anderson plug on the side of the van, wired to our DC-DC charger down here underneath the seat. Um, and they can plug up to another 600 watts of solar. They've got, um, uh, they've got a solar blanket already that they do take with them. So not expecting that they're going to need that with this system, but it's an option if they do park their van in the, in the, in the shade and they need to get a little bit of recharge in. Um, so what we've done is we've mounted the controls in the overhead cupboard. Uh, as you can see, fridge compartment, overhead cupboard, we've got our Sonarine system, which has got two strings of solar coming into it, 12 volt loads, portable solar panels, we've got an overall, uh, we've got our uh, battery monitor telling us how much energy we've got left in the battery. We are actually running this air conditioner at the moment on heat. So we're pulling we're pulling a thousand watts, a thousand and eighty watts out of the system at the moment and that's 90 amps at DC on 12 volt. Um, and that's actually translating through here to 46 amps out of the battery overall, but with 41 amps going in from solar. So there's a there's a deficit, but there's not a huge deficit with the amount of sun. And bearing in mind, this is like, this is the 23rd or 24th of June, I think. 25th. 25th of June. So we've just gone past winter solstice and we're still putting 40 amps in on the DC side. Yeah, and it's only what, 11.30 or something? Yeah, so, um, you know, once the sun gets a little bit higher in the sky, uh, as we get past August, then obviously this system's going to be able to produce quite a substantial amount, which is going to be perfect for them. So, um, we've utilised both seat boxes for this system. So, we've got our fully compliant 550 amp hour battery here underneath the seat. Um, we've got a battery isolator, our battery monitor, which is also required from the compliance perspective from AS3001. And then over the other side here, we've got our inverter, our three chargers, and our monitoring and isolation for solar. 
The other thing that we've done for this system, um, because this air conditioner is an older air conditioner, um, so it's a uh, Dometic B3000, um, it's a direct online type compressor, so not an inverter type compressor, so no variability in it at all, so I've installed a soft starter into this one. Uh, which allows us to utilize this inverter to run that air conditioner for the rest of its life because as I've talked about a couple of times the transient loading on a compressor starting up direct online is too much for these high frequency inverters um, the internals on those inverters don't like that type of load so um, for longevity of the system we install a soft starter into the air conditioner um, now the last thing that we've done to this van as well is we've installed a caravan. These guys are intending on uh, going off-road and going to places that um, are going to require dusty tracks. So the caravan is mounted into the roof there um, and that will give them uh, a bit of comfort that they know when they get to their campsite they're not going to have dust in ingress into the van so all in all this system is um, being designed specifically for this couple um, it's definitely going to be a system that is uh, going to give them lots of flexibility um, as I said at the beginning, it's probably a little bit larger than they actually needed from their load requirement. They don't intend on running their air conditioner for four or five hours a night. They just want to be able to pull over on the side of the road. And if it's a bit hot, they want to be able to turn it on, have that flexibility. They want to be able to run electrical appliances in the kitchen. So definitely the coffee machine, induction cooker, a few other bits and pieces that they want to be able to run. So this system will do that for them, no problems whatsoever. So I suppose in saying that, if it's if it's um, a system that's quite big based on their usage, um, then they would get better uh, a longer time off grid during winter with Correct. this kind of setup. So that, I guess that's the the benefit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what we thought about with that is all of the things. So you know, it's an old air conditioner. It uses a lot more energy than a new air conditioner. It's an old fridge it uses a lot more energy than a new fridge. So if they were, for example, in a scenario where it was camping on the south coast in the middle of winter, mm. where you've got, you know, solar generation is, is mm. very poor, very minimal, even if they were off grid for a week, they would still have enough capacity to keep their fridge running. So that battery, even with the lack of recharge that they're going to get from the sun, is more than enough to run this fridge for you know mm. a week basically right. um, so yeah there's there's definitely been some thought into the why um, some people don't need this size system for the type of energy consumption that these guys are going to, to use they will be doing a little bit they will be chasing the Sun for the most part but they're not going to be as well they do want to be able to do mm. you know they, they have a diesel heater in here as well, so that gives them the flexibility to keep themselves warm in winter time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's um, it's a really nice system. It's a nice big system um, that's going to give them lots of flexibility to do whatever they want and to travel whichever season it is. Correct. All right, we'll wrap that one up there. Any questions? Don't hesitate to give us a to give us a comment, and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Cheers. Especially if you've got an older caravan, because this is a prime example of an older caravan that um, my sister was very happy with, just wanted to uh, have a better power system. So this is a perfect um, example of it. Cheers. See you next time.